fantasy? Five Powerball with the power pin. When a surprise win makes you richer than your wildest dreams. I won $62.8 million. <laughs> what happens next? The first thing you say, you never have to work again. Do you indulge your own personal passions? It's a cream puff. It's just a cream puff. Or spread your wealth around. I always gave, but I think it'll be a little more now. It should be the win of a lifetime, but for some, it's a dream turned sour. Everything turns to be about money. Everybody wants money from him. I'm Richie Randazzo, and I won $5 million from the New York State Lottery. Richie Rondazzo, Brooklyn boy and Park Avenue doorman, sat down in his kitchen one day with a roast beef hero and a scratch lottery card. I started scratching my ticket while eating my hero. I noticed I matched on number 15. Then I scratched off the prize. Bam! Life. It doesn't get any sweeter than that. Life meant set for life. $5,000 a week from New York State Lottery for the rest of his life. First thing I did was thank God. Then I did a little, a little dance around my table. Then Richie called his mom in Florida. Phone rings, and it's Richard. Hey, Ma, we're rich, we're rich, and Neil Diamond is going to give us a private concert. I said, Richard, what are you talking about? While $5 million won't actually buy you a private Neil Diamond concert, it will buy you the next best thing. My husband and I flew right in to New York. He surprised us with a stretch limo that was half the size of the block. We had the fourth row of seats. We're almost sitting on Neil Diamond's lap. It was a great day. Apart from treating his parents like royalty, Richie's first decision as a millionaire was to make no major decisions at all for a whole year. He still lives in the same Brooklyn house he grew up in, and he drives the same car. People ask me all the time, Richie, buy a Lamborghini, a Ferrari. No, I have enough to buy it, but um, it's not time. For now, this is sufficient. Mega millions, 65 million, baby. You never know. He wanted to stay with his doorman's job, too, becoming Manhattan's $5 million doorman. Some people still recognize me because I did make a big splash in New York. I was the doorman who struck it big on Park Avenue and who was going to move into the building that I worked for. Uh, doorman in Manhattan makes almost 40000 a year. I won 5000 a week for life, or $5 million. And my friend used to be in there. How you doing? Johnny! What's up, brother? How you doing, man? <laughs> How did I find out? I saw him, uh, saw a stupid mug on the picture in the, uh, in the newspaper. I said, you got to be kidding me, you know? And then he was tough to get a hold of on the phone, because at that time he was a superstar, you know? I've been on a lot of talk shows. I met a lot of great people, from Howard Stern to Regis and Kelly, Inside Edition, Fox and Friends. Not bad for a snot-nosed kid from Brooklyn. But Richie's 15 minutes of fame didn't go down well at his Upper East Side workplace. The next thing I know is my job. They sent me a letter that I'm not standing at my post, I'm wearing short sleeves, I'm not in my uniform. I said, what is this? I've said for six and a half years, I've been working the same way I'm working now. Now all of a sudden you're gonna tell me I'm not doing my job right? I'll show you. I called in sick the next day and went to Atlantic City. It just happened that the media followed me with a beautiful girl and a beautiful car, and they had my picture on the front page of the New York Post. So they didn't take too kindly to that. Neither did his mom. She wants Richie to find a nice girl and settle down. Richie's girlfriend worked at a well-known New York gentleman's club. And there she is in this little, little bikini. And that's when I called him up and I said, Richard, if this does not stop, I'm finished. Richie's boss felt the same way and fired him. I enjoyed it and I miss it. Part of me misses all these people. You know, I did the best job I could. He and his girlfriend went their separate ways too. So now Richie's rich, but out of work, and that could lead him back to a dark past he thought he'd escaped long ago. I'm that close to going back to where I was, and um, I never want to live that life. Winning the lottery is a beautiful thing, but uh, without being sober, I wouldn't have nothing. I wouldn't have nothing.
I'm Philip Pina, and I won $62.8 million. <laughs> Chama, New Mexico is a sleepy town, but its local mechanic brought it national attention in May 2007. Auto mechanic Philip Pina played Powerball for 10 years, and two years ago, his numbers finally came up. I worked late at my shop, and when I was leaving, I saw my lottery ticket in the cup holder, and that's when I remembered I better check my numbers. Went and got the newspaper out, and I... I started reading the numbers, and uh, wow, all the numbers just lined up. I didn't get excited or nothing. I just uh, went home. He came home. He moves his head, and he just goes like this. And I'm like, what's wrong? I made it look like kind of, you know, I got a problem. And I said, oh, my god, I bet you something with his son. And I said, said it. I hit the jackpot. And he hit it big, real big. $62.8 million. Philip won $62.8 million. He took a lump sum payout of $29.5 million after taxes. This is a 2007 310J backhoe. Lottery winners often buy flashy vehicles with their winnings. Philip just has a different take on flashy. This is a Lexus or Mercedes of all equipment right here. His passion is restoring classic cars. And this brand new shop is Philip's idea of heaven. I painted this myself, the floor and everything, just like the dealerships. A lot of people buy expensive diamonds and uh, they buy big yachts or whatever, but uh, I'm not into that really. I, I buy two boxes over here. I can go buy, if I want $10,000 worth of tools. When you have money, you can, uh, you can buy whatever you want to for Falcon Sprint. 1963 Corvette, and the newest toy was my wife fell in love with this. This is a 1989 Mustang, but I got a good wife, though. Whatever she wants, she'll get. If he sounds like a newlywed, that's because he is one. I want you to meet my wife over here. This is Adeline Tinia, and we've been married about 10 years now. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> oh, is it 10 months? <laughs> Uh, 10 months. The couple had been taking things slowly until Philip hit it big. Now they could afford to get married. My wedding was a very, very special wedding. It was very simple. It was plain and simple, but it was nice. Adeline, I, I look at her and I thank my lucky stars, the best companion. The couple used to live in a mobile home. Now they could build a new 5,000 square foot dream home complete with three bedrooms and two and a half baths. So we put all this together. My wife, she made the blueprints and everything. And uh, even after I won the money, I never dreamed of having such a beautiful house. So I guess when you hit the power ball, you do change, I guess, better things in life. This is the first time that we're gonna use this table to eat in it. Just look at this setting, it's beautiful. That's why I love my wife so much. It's, uh, she's beautiful. There's the grandkids. There comes the Philip and Adeline are enjoying the good life and sharing their fortune with family. But sometimes there's a downside to winning the lottery. Everything turns to be about money. Everybody wants money from him. And I, I think if Adeline hadn't been around, I don't know what he would have done. Some would go to any lengths to get their hands on his money. He had got like five gallons of gas and sprayed it all around, and he started it on fire. Up next, the millionaire forced out of his home by the financial crisis. I couldn't afford to keep this house. I got stuck on those adjustables. And later, the cat and mouse game as Publishers Clearinghouse tracks down its latest winner. Okay, I'll hang back. Okay, that's a good idea. What's the largest lottery jackpot in history? Find out after the break. Barbie is the biggest. <clears throat> Whose gift do you like? Cuddles. $49. Of this color. What's the largest lottery jackpot in history? A whopping $365 million. Eight Nebraska co-workers each took a $22 million share after taxes. 
It's one visit all Americans dream of, the publisher's clearinghouse prize patrol. In the last 42 years, this American icon has awarded 320 million in prizes, tracking down winners across the country to hand deliver oversized checks. Sherman? Sherwin. Sherwin. Jewel Litchfield, we found you. Today, we're joining the prize patrol on their latest seek and surprise mission. It's the crack of dawn, but the team wants to get the jump on their lucky winner, Doris Gray. Hi, it's Eve Fish of the Prize Patrol, and we're here in South Orange, New Jersey, ready to surprise our big 5,000 a week for life winner. Publishers Clearinghouse started in 1953 as a magazine circulation agency, using direct mail to sell magazine subscriptions. And in 1967, we added a sweepstakes to it to draw attention to these mailings. Some years there'll be 40 or 50 big prizes. Sometimes, like this coming year, there'll be over 100. In a house not far from this parking lot, Doris is going about her day. She has no idea that in minutes, she'll join the Winner's Hall of Fame with a prize of $5,000 a week for life. We just scoped out the house, and there were cars there, and we believe that someone's there. For the last 29 years, I've been going out and delivering prizes to these winners. The big moment has arrived, but will the winner be home? Hey, I'll hang back. OK, that's a good idea. Somebody's coming. OK. Uh-oh. Is that her? Doris. Doris? Is Doris here? The team was early. She's working. But not early enough. The good news is that they're not far off from finding her. A housekeeper came to the door, and it turns out that the winner is a school teacher a few miles away. So we're going to try and arrange a visit there. Bestowing untold riches on unsuspecting winners is a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. The best part is waiting for the winner to appear. I'm Frank Levis, and my family and me won $6.3 million in the Florida lottery. Meet Panama Frank. I was born and raised in the Canal Zone. Panama is where my heart is, and my patriotism is in the United States. At 50, Frank became a millionaire when his father hit the lottery in 1991 and immediately spread the wealth around. Well, the first thing he said, you never have to work again, and I like what he said. His dad took half the win and split the other half between Frank, his brother, and his cousin. So each would get $1.6 million in annual payments over 20 years. And in Florida, there's no state income tax. Soon, Frank quit his job as a real estate agent. I was pretty frugal at the beginning. I didn't go out and buy a big sports car. I didn't have anything extravagant. I never bought a brand new car, personally. I thought about that because I listened to stories of people that got on the drugs and people that bought all kinds of cars and didn't know how to manage their money properly. If Frank took a while to get into the swing of being a high roller, he soon made up for lost time. I bought an 03 Jaguar and was three years old and got a good deal. I had a condo. As well as the Florida condo, Frank splurged on a vacation condo in Panama to keep links with his beloved childhood home. But his best buy was this $235,000 waterfront home in upscale St. Petersburg, purchased in 1998. This is the house that I bought with the annuity money that I got from the lottery. It's got a total of four bedrooms, a nice big sitting area, a double fireplace with this most beautiful view. You know, when I moved in here with my lady friend, this place was a mess. And we're painting, and we're doing this and doing that, and we turned it into a beautiful home. He spent 150 grand on improvements, knowing the property market was about to boom. We redid all these, and I put these little tiles up with little birds on them to give a little color. I felt that this color here was Latino, and I liked the Latin way of living. I've got a painting here, and I like the personality of that. I put the gecko up, so if somebody wants to let me know they're here, Mr. Gecko's here. And Mr. Waterfall even has the birds. And then here is my bedroom. I've got a lot of shirts. Uh, just like the bright colors and the personality. I mean, I don't care what other people think, what I'm wearing, because I feel it's loud. It's, uh, well, I, I'm loud too at times, but that's my personality. I don't believe in uh, gloom and doom. I like bright colors because bright colors, I believe, bring uh, more positive energy in the world. 
to everybody around me, including myself. Now, look at that beautiful shirt. Good fortune has smiled on Frank, but he's also had his fair share of heartache. His beloved father had a heart attack and passed away in 1991, only a year after winning the lottery. Frank inherited half of his father's annuities worth $1.5 million. His lottery fortune now totaled $3.1 million. But in spite of all this, Panama Frank has a massive cash flow problem. He refinanced his home to back investments, but when the economy crashed, Frank's investment income nosedived. I just got caught, uh, so to speak, with my pants down like a lot of people. By law, Frank can't touch future lottery payments, so now he can't even pay his mortgage. Could this millionaire lose what he treasures most? Get protein. The Department of Veterans Affairs. I'm Richard Rendazzo, and I won $5 million from the New York State Lottery. And life doesn't get sweeter than this. From Park Avenue doorman to multi-million dollar lottery winner, the Big Apple loved Richie Rondazzo's rags to riches tale. But there's a story behind every headline, and Richie's starts on a very different avenue, in Gravesend, Brooklyn. I was an avenue boy. I mean, that was my goal in life. Welcome to my block. We're in Gravesend, Brooklyn. Born here, raised here, hit the lottery here. Hey, Lou. Richie grew up in a close-knit family. But he and his friends were drawn to life on the streets. Back in the day here, you know, there was a line of Cadillacs, and the guys that drove those cars dressed impeccably. And that was what I was attracted to, the fellas from the neighborhood. This is where I went to uh, from first grade to eighth grade. I chose to just uh, to be a tough kid, you know, thought I was a tough kid, but I was a pug, a thug, and a mug. A little bit of smoking was going on, and they all party. By high school, harmless partying turned into hard drugs. It started out as fun and um, having a good time, a good laugh out of it. But as time progressed, um, I didn't go home. And I got involved in a lot of uh, drugs, alcohol. Honestly, I slept on these benches for a long time. And um, that broke my mother's heart. You know, that almost killed my mother. Actually, my mother almost had me killed because I was such a pain in, in, in the ass to her. I spilled a lot of blood here, got shot at, stabbed. I went to too many funerals. I went to too many prisons. But it didn't stop me. It didn't stop me at all. Family and friends feared Richie's addiction might lead down the same path. But nine years ago, he came face to face with an old friend who would change his life. I stole a car. They caught me not too far from here, put the handcuffs on me. I turned around. I looked up. He looked down. I said, Mark. He said, Richie. I said, get me out of here. He goes, get you out of here. He goes, my guys want to kill you. You pulled a three-mile chase. He said, Richie, when are you going to stop? And something just kicked in. I knew it was time to change my life around. And I said, all right, you know, I'm going to try my best to, to, to stop this lifestyle. Instead of jail, Richie went into rehab. In my struggle every day, I got to remember, you know, where I came from. And I keep that up front every day, because I'm, 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 it's so easy to go back. And with this great fortune that I have, it's even easier. The winning the lottery is a beautiful thing, but uh, no, it's without being uh, sober, I wouldn't have nothing. I wouldn't have nothing. It would have made things worse. Richie hopes to inspire others with his recovery story. And now, thanks to the lottery, he has the time to do it. By me expressing what I went through, I would try to help. Hopefully, it would help somebody else, because I know I'm not the only one. If I could work something out where I could speak at a college, at a school, at a prison, as long as the coffee's good. I'm Philippe Pina, and I won 62.8 million dollars. <laughs> Filipina was an auto mechanic when he hit the Powerball and hit it big. Born and raised in Chama, New Mexico, he worked long and hard to build his automotive shop from scratch. This is my old business. I started here in 1985, so I closed it down about uh, six months later after I hit the 
Powerball lottery. You have three old, old messages. Felipe, do you still work in, in cars? And if you do, please call me back. After a lifetime of hard work, Philip thought his win would make everything easier. He was wrong. That's uh, that's it's the money. A lot of people come at you real strong. Like a former employee who showed up at Philip's shop 12 years after he left the job, suddenly demanding money. A few hours later, they called me, and uh, there was a fire behind my shop and uh, the shed in the back. He had got like five gallons of gas and sprayed it all around, and he started it on fire. Burned down most of it to the ground. The arsonist was arrested. But the troubles got even worse when Philip's family turned against him. I gave money to my family, yeah. I helped everybody out, my mother, my brother, all the nephews and nieces, and uh, I helped them out so much, and, uh, but they always want a little bit more, I think, in life. The demands caused a rift so deep, Philip has no contact with his brother, sister, and even his mother. You know, my mom's up in age already, and uh, when you cannot even talk to your mother, you know, she brought you into the world, everything, it's... It's, uh, to me, it's real disappointing. And if they don't appreciate what I give them, then they're real selfish in life. Family shouldn't turn against family. And that has been really sad for Philip because I know he misses his family. They'll come around and they'll start talking to us and hopefully things will get back together again. But it's not just the family putting on the pressure. After I won the Powerball, the letters started coming in from all over. I get probably 10, 20 letters a day. Here's one from uh, Kirtland, New Mexico. When you're a multi-millionaire, even strangers want a share of your cash. Got a pretty crazy one here. The reason for my letter is to look for a sponsor with a lot of capital to back me in poker tournaments. Coming up, the millionaire hit hard by the financial crisis. I'll definitely miss it, but it's time to move on. And later, waiting for a winner who's set for life. Now we're just waiting for the kids to be assembled in the cafeteria. Everyone's going to see us come in and award the prize. Which states have the lowest taxes on lottery wins? The answer after the break. This way, taking action to you to do with the animal, the only environment most of those animals get. Along with Slip. Let's go take down a wall. And the money to get it all done. It needs Leslie and Lindsay. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. It's all about the money. It's all about selling it. Unsellable houses. All new Sunday at 8 on HGTV. Barbie is the biggest movie of the year. And the... $6.3 million in the... Which states have the lowest taxes on lottery wins? Florida, Texas, and Washington, where you won't pay state income taxes. I'm Frank Levis, and my family and me won $6.3 million in the Florida lottery. When Panama Frank's dad hit the lottery, he immediately spread his wealth around, giving Frank a $1.6 million share. And when his dad passed away, Frank inherited half of his father's lottery fortune, too worth another 1.5 million. Frank invested in property, stocks, and this stunning waterfront home. I bought this home because the first time I walked in, I saw this view, and that's what sold me on it. It's got 108 feet of waterfront property, a beautiful dock. Even though I don't have a boat, I sit out here and have dinner in the evening and enjoy the sunsets. But Frank's known hard times. After his dad's death, Frank's marriage fell apart. Then, a woman he shared this dream home with died 10 years ago. While Frank grieved, his investments failed. My girlfriend died, and I didn't pay attention to the market, and I was just angry, so I didn't really care. But I had faith and trust in America, in our economic system, that the market would come back, and it did not. So I lost. Worse still, when Frank's waterfront house leapt in value, he borrowed against it to fund his failing investments. And now, he's left with a debt he can't pay. In short, this former millionaire has big cash flow problems. He tried to sell his home, but the housing bubble burst, and now he's one step away from foreclosure. When I purchased this home, the real estate went up to a million 
350000 Today, this home is worth less than half of that. He can't touch future lotto payments, and neither can the bank. So the bank's taken his house and will short sell for whatever price it can get. To avoid the foreclosure process, we will market the property at market value. And basically, market value is more than likely less than what the current owner owes to the bank. But finally, a buyer wants to come back for a second look. And uh, they are interested in making an offer. And I talked to the agent on the phone. They've kind of thrown out some numbers to me, so I wanted to go through that with you, if that's all right. Sure, that sounds okay. good. Sure, I um, If we could kind of clear the things out in from in front of the door. What is this for? This. Well, I plan on yeah. having a party here, uh, one more party before I depart from the premises. Mm -hmm. If the sale goes through, Frank will lose his home and every single cent he spent on it. But Frank is an eternal optimist. But if they don't get it and I get to keep it, then it was meant to be. Good positive attitude, and I wish more of my clients were like you. The hard part here is to uh, be in a place that you love and it's time to move on. But you see, I don't question it uh, today because uh, I'm not going to beat my brains out worrying about anything. And you'll notice on my mirrors in all my bathrooms, it says you are looking at the main source of all your happiness right in that mirror. This once millionaire might be forced out of his dream home. He knows it's a long shot, but he's appealing to Lady Luck one more time. This place here has sold so many winning tickets. I think at least one lottery and two fantasies. And I feel that I can be just as lucky as they can, and I want to win this time for myself. Five lottery, five fantasy, and five mega ball, but power play. Okay, five Powerball with the power play. Don't forget me if you win today. If I win this lottery, okay. I'm going to buy my house back. Hopefully Good it's luck. tonight, tonight, tonight. Will Frank's lucky numbers come up, or will he be moving out? Doris? Is Doris here? In Patterson, New Jersey, Publishers Clearinghouse Prize Patrol is hot on the trail of its latest jackpot Doris. winner, Doris Gray. They tried to catch her at home, but she slipped through their fingers by leaving for work early. Undaunted, they tracked her to this middle school. We finally arrived at the school where Doris works, and now we're just waiting for the kids to be assembled in the cafeteria. Everyone's going to see us come in and award the prize. That's Jeez. like millions of dollars. That means you're a millionaire. You have to get that in there. She's a school teacher in New Jersey teaching in the school where she's taught for 38 years. She's beloved by the students and by the faculty there. She's just a really inspiring woman. Yeah. Hi, Doris. Where's Doris? Hi, Doris. I'm from Publishers Clearinghouse. We're all from Publishers Clearinghouse. Yeah, you received a no! letter. You won a thousand dollars or five thousand a week for life for the rest of your life. Oh, right? Look at he told me. That's a scam. Don't send that thing. Look at these It's just your first week with 5,000. Oh, my God! Cuz, can you believe this? I cannot believe it. I think I can picture this. Suddenly becoming a millionaire can turn your life upside down in a good way. Eight years ago, people, I had breast cancer, and I didn't even think I would be alive. And look at me here with all of this. I'm crying. My head is starting to hurt. I got nervous because the principal came. We were in a meeting with people from the state. And he came and he looked so serious and I thought something had happened to Grandma Eva. It means helping a brother who was just laid off from his job, helping a sister. I would love to pay my daughter's college tuition loan off. That's the first thing I'm going to do. But Doris's windfall won't mean she'll be taking a long vacation. Maybe now I'll take a few days off. 
I think I will. <laughs> I'll take a few days off. I got I to gotta see where do we start? How do we help those who need help? She's going to spread this money around and do a lot of good works with it. I always gave, but I think it'll be a little more now. For Dave Sayer and the Prize Patrol, it's been a great day at the office. I've been doing this for 29 years, and this is probably the biggest winning moment we have ever had. OK, I want to get a good big smile. Two months later, Doris is chauffeured to Publishers Clearinghouse to meet the people who made it all happen. Two, three, ECA. She's waiting till the end of the year to splurge. When she'll throw a huge party for all the kids at her school. How many entries do you get? Your odds of winning were one in 505 million. <laughs> oh my gosh. Knowing the odds just makes it even harder for Doris to believe her luck. Each and every one of you had a part in it. And I just want to say thank you, thank you so much. It's unbelievable. Up next, time has run out for Panama Frank, but there's enough for one last party. Having final closure in my thoughts about this house. Sunday. For the last six weeks, I wasn't really sure I was going to even stay. Really, you want to stay seven? Metamuso and indulge to see if market crash have left him. He won six points. I'm Frank Levis, and my family and me won $6.3 million in the Florida lottery. Panama Frank Levis had a $1.6 million windfall 17 years ago when his dad won the lottery. But bad investments and the housing market crash have left him unable to pay his mortgage. The bank is short selling the home he's loved for the last 11 years. If I win this lottery, I'm going to buy my house back. Frank knows it's a long shot, so he's packing his bags. With only one year of lottery payments left, his future's uncertain, but he's optimistic. I don't worry about a thing. I've always been provided for. And if need be, I'll get a job. You know, I can always do something. In that spirit, Frank plans to celebrate his time in his dream home, not wallow in regret. Well, I plan on having one more party before I depart from the premises. And a celebration calls for a new party shirt. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Hi. Hi. Frank bought this house and rebuilt it. It meant a lot to him. It was a, a dream come true. Time to move on. I'm going to be a renter, no taxes, no insurance. Even though it's difficult for him, he'll move on, and he'll, he always makes the best of everything. Hey, friends, God bless you. I'm glad you all came today, because today I feel real good that I'm having final closure in my thoughts about this house. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, I'll definitely miss it, but it's time to move on. I've had a good run. I've been here, as I said, 11 years. It's a new chapter for this lotto millionaire. For the most part, I'm very grateful where I'm at today. And if I had to do it all over again, I would do it again. And again and again and again. I'm Richie Rendazzo, and I won five million from the New York State Lottery. Brooklyn's Richie Rondazzo says he won the lottery twice. First, when he got off drugs, and again, when he nabbed $5 million with a scratch-off. My hobby is cars. I'm a fanatic for cars, uh, muscle cars from the 60s and the 70s. That's my thing. Things like that make me happy. When Richie won, he decided to take things slowly for a year. But he did splurge recently on this caddy, which he bought used from a friend. It's a cream puff, you know? It's just a cream puff. I just love the car. When I saw it for the first time, I said, someday I gotta have one of these. She's a beast. You know, money doesn't buy happiness. All it does is buy a nice Cadillac to drive around looking for it. A year later, Richie is ready to get serious about his future. Why, oh, Mariuch, how are you doing? Beautiful day, drop the top, go take a ride to Coney Island. 
one of the train stations. That's the one I used to sleep on. I've been coming here for about 35, 40 years since I was a kid. My dream has always been to own a little piece of Coney Island. He'd like to reopen the Dunk the Creep game, his favorite as a child. You get a comedian in a, in a tank of water with a target, he insults you, and I give you five balls for three dollars, and you try to sink them in the tank. You know, my, my main priority is to keep this money, to make this money grow, you know, expand. Uh, you know, a lot of people lose their money right away. You know, the first thing I did was put the money right in the bank. But this Brooklyn boy's mom has other priorities. Richard's still not married, which I'm wishing there's got to be some girl out there for him. Please answer. Up next, the multimillionaire who's still learning the ropes. <laughs> I, I never had this done in my whole life, so that, I guess that's what money can do for you. How many lottery winners stop playing after they hit it big? We'll find out after the break. Barbie is the biggest movie of the year. Liquid Sky Rhythm. We're past your enter. Never ending first chord. Things to where you're at. Philippine. The rest keep truer than ever before. Now seven days a week on TBS. How many lottery winners stop playing after they hit it big? Just 2%. The rest keep trying their luck at least once a week. I'm Philippe Pina, and I won $62.8 million. <laughs> Philip Pina won $62.8 million in the New Mexico Lottery Powerball. Suddenly, everybody knew his name and the contents of his bank account. He receives up to 20 letters a day from strangers hoping to get their hands on his money. Dear sir, I have bread credit. I owe the IRS. My payroll check is being garnished. You know, they max every credit card out. And then they hear about a Powerball winner. No, that's, uh, they got into it and you get out of it. I ain't gonna help him out at all. Uh, there was some in there that are asking for hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's, uh, yeah, he, he go broke. I had one that uh, I met with and everything and uh, pretty much he wanted like $8 million, you know, and so, so that's crazy. Philip prefers to use his money to help people in his own community. I've helped people out with scholarships going to college and that's people that really need help. And education is his favorite investment. A lot of kids here in these small rural towns, there's not many jobs, so if you get into school and get an education, you can go out in the world and get a, a really good job. Philip made a deal with his son, Philip Arthur. After I uh, won the Powerball, he asked me if he could uh, quit work, and I thought I was gonna give him money and just be a little bomb. I told him he had one option, and that was to go to school. If his son stays in school, Philip pays all the bills. He hopes that one day, he and his son can start a business together. Because for all his millions, there's one thing Philip will never give up. Philip is a, a workaholic. You know, he starts working in his garage. He does something outside. He starts working, or he starts piling up wood. You know, he's, he's working here and there. And I try to tell him, you know, we need a, t a break. We need to get out. And, do some other things. I don't because I'm used to doing all this work. Oh. One, two, three. But after a relaxed weekend with family, the message is finally getting through. So this is a good day for a little surprise after a long week. He's taking his wife to Bogosa Springs, the luxurious resort visited by celebs like Oprah Winfrey. Around $1,000 for a romantic weekend, it's a first for this lottery couple. I've been wanting to come over here for a long time now, and I keep telling him, but he's so busy. But my God, I, I love this place. Thank you. Me, you're too much. <laughs> <laughs> While he may have $29 million in the bank, Philip admits he's still learning to live as a rich man. You ready for your massages? Like when you get a job with a company, they, you're like on a probation. And that's what I'm going through. I'm, I'm learning what I'm gonna be doing with all, all this wealth. <laughs> I, I never had this done in my whole life, so that, I guess that's what money can do for you. I think 
the man upstairs has taken care of me though and, and he's blessed me all along. It's, uh, he really blessed me with a big one in life. I love you, babe. I'm Richie Randazzo and I won five million from the New York State Lottery. Richie Randazzo survived drug addiction and a dangerous past. Today, he has more to celebrate than his $5 million lottery win. It's his 45th birthday, and Richie will share it with his parents and family. My parents live in Florida, and they've been down here for about 10 years. It was a perfect spot for them. As you can see, we have tight quarters here at the Rendazzo house in Florida. Do you like to wait this? Yeah. yeah. But you know something, Ma? Everything changes, but certain things remain the same. I'll love. I'll, oh. Some people thought Richie might never make it to 45, but not his mom, Cara. She never gave up on me. Never, no matter how bad things got. But on the eve of her son's birthday, Cara still has one pressing concern. With uh, Richard, all I keep asking him is there has to be somebody out there for you to spend the rest of your life with. And he keeps saying, no, she hasn't been made yet. Set for life and looking for love. I got to bring home that one good girl for my mother. But until Ms. Wright shows up, Richie is taking life day by day. Right now, it's time to eat, drink, and be merry. This is beyond a special day for me to have all you guys here, my family with me. I love yous. Chin Don. Chin Don. And listen, nobody, and I mean nobody, leaves without getting a lottery ticket. Ah. Now that Richie's uh, set for life. Set for life. <laughs> we get to have more of Richie. We got a lot of money. Don't worry about it. Everybody gets lottery tickets. You know, I've had my problems with drugs and alcohol. Most people had me scratched off years ago. But that's my challenge in life, you know, to prove everybody and myself that uh, I can do this. Panama Frank Levis faces challenges, too. Buyers have offered the bank half a million for his home, and Frank's downsizing to this beachside rental. His lottery numbers haven't come up yet, but he's still hoping. I can run for you. You can retire. Meanwhile, teacher-turned-millionaire Doris Gray will retire in a style she never dreamed of. I still can't believe it. It's just, it's hard to believe. It only takes a split second for a ball to drop or a number to come up. I got my reading glasses out, pretty much, and they lined up. I, I had a winner. But if it's your number, one thing's for sure. Richer or poorer, in sickness or in health, hitting the jackpot will change your life forever.